in this video I'm going to talk about this little white line that's uh, visible on the aerial view of the Eastern State Penitentiary. The line itself is not new or anything like that. It wasn't a feature of the uh, prison when it was in operation. Um, but it's relatively interesting and you can see from our title over here um, that little white line uh, marks the pathway of a 97-foot tunnel that was used on the morning of April 3rd, 1945 to move 12 inmates from uh, 7 cell block uh, to the outside community. And uh, from the earlier video you can see again um, while when the prison was constructed in, in 1829 it wouldn't have been built up like this. By 1945 it would have been so when they would have come up out of their tunnel they would have been right in the middle of this community here. So um, we can see on the inside of the wall you can see here's seven block on the side or seven uh, cell block seven. Uh, the white line is coming out of uh, what's going to be the last uh, cell in there, cell 68 on the first floor. It's going to come right around that pathway and just on the other side of this wall uh, there will be a, a small hole coming up out of the ground where the inmates uh, would have come up. So if we look at the uh, interior of uh, uh, cell block 7, uh, you can see it's uh, a two-tiered cell all the way down here on the very end, right as you get to the outside door on the left-hand side is cell 68 where uh, Clarence Kleindenst and his cellmate spent about a year digging a hole that goes 15 feet down into the ground and as I mentioned the tunnel itself is about uh, 97 feet somewhere in there just under a hundred feet long uh, it goes just on the other side of the three foot thick wall and then it comes back up 15 feet uh, which culminates in a two foot wide hole just outside the prison near the intersection here of Fairmont Avenue and 22nd Street. So Klein Dentst, and as you can tell as he sits here in handcuffs, um, not a successful escape. Um, we'll get to, to that in a minute, but Klein Dentst concealed his hole um, behind a metal uh, trash can or a laundry basket sometimes it's called. Um, he was the a plasterer so he took a, a board and painted it gray to match the plaster in a cell and then he nailed a metal waste basket or laundry basket onto the board to conceal the big hole that's in the cell. Uh, you can see here's a, a photo after the discovery um, here's the metal laundry basket or waste basket concealing that hole. Here's a photo of the just kind of a diagram uh, of the cell that showed. And it's a rel relatively sophisticated tunnel um, with uh, ladders and support beams. There's electric lights that run uh, through the tunnel. Um, and uh, obviously, uh, we know they were successful in, in leaving the prison. Um, they, they would have found the tunnel and uh, eventually filled it in. Here is uh, the current status of the tunnel. So after the discovery of the tunnel, uh, guards filled it with ash and then poured concrete over it to fill it in. But on the morning of April 3rd, 1945, on their way to breakfast, 12 inmates, um, including the famous bank robber Willie Sutton, ducked into the tunnel and escaped out the other side uh, and then scattered into this neighborhood. Uh, unfortunately for those inmates, freedom was not meant to be. Uh, Sutton only made it uh, a couple of blocks away. He was free for a couple of minutes before he ran into some uh, police officers uh, and he was captured almost immediately. Uh, Klein Dents didn't do uh, much better. He lasted out uh, about three hours or so before he was captured. Uh, by the end of that first day, uh, about half the inmates had been captured and within a couple of months they, they would all have been recaptured. Uh, perhaps the most interesting 
capture story belongs to inmate James Grace on April 11th, just a, about a week or a little over a week from the escape. Grace walked up to these front gates and asked to be let in because he was hungry. <laughs> 